Hello, everybody. We're in the subtropical fruit garden or kind of on the margin of it, but I'm not here to talk about fruiting plant right now. I wanna talk about another one of my favorites among the cycads. So this plant that I'm next to is Zamia furfuraceae. It's also sometimes called the cardboard palm, even though it has really no familial relations to palms, excepting that it's a plant because cycads represent a more ancient lineage of plants that even predates our modern conifers. So cycads, as I've mentioned before, go all the way back to existing very similarly to how they do today in fossils from a time when dinosaurs still roam the earth. That's one of my favorite things about the group of cycads is that they're such a storied group of plants and their story has changed so much in recent years. So with the advent of a lot of plant exploration and collection going on, even from one country to another, these plants, cycads, unfortunately became one of the main sufferers, one of the main victims globally of plant poaching. And believe it or not, that's actually how we came to have these plants that I'm standing next to. Cycads are almost across the globe endangered where they naturally grow. And this species, Zamia furfuraceae, comes from the Veracruz state in Mexico, meaning that it's a little bit more on the tropical cusp than we are even, but they grow so fantastically in a landscaped setting that this species has actually become really popular and even a bit more in demand for landscape use. This, I think, is only second in use in gardens to Cycas revoluta, the sago palm, that is by far the most ubiquitous cycad out there. I wanted to mention a few things about these plants specifically in terms of their garden utility. So you notice that I'm standing right in the midst of this. Unlike some cycads, these are quite gentle. They're actually very agreeable plants. They're easy to put them in a space next to a pathway, for instance, and know that they're not gonna become too giant and spiny to manage. And one of the things that is really wonderful about these cycads is that they produce multiple clustered heads. This is not just one plant growing from one meristem. The caudex underneath this big mass of leaves is actually a whole bunch of heads. And part of why that's so wonderful with the species that is highly threatened and even very endangered in its native habitat is that it's pretty easy to propagate more of them. One of the ways that this plant is available through commercial nursery trade is that you can actually divide it. And what a wonderful thing to be able to take something like Zamia furfuraceae and rather than ever have to go back and disturb their relic little highly endangered habitat, we can just continue to grow these horticulturally and we can make them available as people wanna put them into their landscapes. And what a wonderful way to not only reduce the threat to the very few of these remaining in their habitat in Veracruz, but also to make sure that people out there who want to have something that's so outstanding that it's represented in fossil records in their own landscape can actually come upon that kind of plant material legitimately. There's a whole bunch of different ways that we as an institution are working with cycads, not only this species, but cycads from around the world to help not only conserve them in their native habitats, but also to proliferate them so that people around the world can have more of these amazing plants. Part of why I wanted to showcase cycads here today is not only because I'm a little bit obsessed with them, but also because tomorrow we're actually gonna be meeting for the first time in a newly formed group called the Global Conservation Consortium for Cycads. And there are a handful of these other groups that have already been established and they serve as an international network where we all can collaboratively work together to have the broadest and most dramatically positive impact on these plants across the entire globe. Not only does this plant represent something wonderful to our garden in that we could preserve in perpetuity a plant that unfortunately had been poached from habitat and confiscated at one of our ports of entry, but we can continue to make more of them legitimately available. And we can also participate in broad research networks and hopefully 
use our garden actually as a way to impact not only this species anywhere it's found in a garden setting, but also as a way to preserve the little tiny piece of something like Xamia furfuraceae that still exists in a wild setting in a place like Veracruz.